So Cassandra, um, lovely to see you on Zoom. Uh, and um, let's let's establish that you are Australian. And um, where were you born? And did you have a musical upbringing? Um, yeah, so I was from far north Queensland. I'm from Cairns, which is a relatively small regional town yeah. um, near the Great Barrier Reef, as everyone knows. Um, I was from a very, I am from a very musical family. Um, my grandmother ran the local choral society and taught me piano from a very young age. My mum's a singing teacher and taught at my high school. And yeah, there was basically no escaping the music world. <laughs> this, this, this seems to be the, a bit of a pattern emerging actually amongst the, um, you guys for this, the, this year. That, uh, but I suppose you could, have, you could have broken out and refused to do it and become a brain surgeon instead. Well, I did study speech therapy for four years when I left school. And then I realised, no, I think I need to do music. And here we are. <laughs> and that's the important thing, isn't it? I mean, if, if you're doing something else and you think, well, actually, I can't live without doing music, then that's, yeah. kind of the, that's a no-brainer then. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and what led you to start wanting to, I mean, when did you start having singing lessons? When did you, how did that um, educational path play out? Yeah, I mean, I was always drawn to the piano from a really young age and I played the piano like quite seriously throughout school and maybe was a little bit shy about singing even though I loved it and I, I probably was quite like good at it I guess but I was just probably a bit shy yeah. um so I preferred being behind the piano and it probably wasn't until later in high school that I started taking it seriously and my mum really supported the singing and got me out of my shell. Um, when I left high school, she found me a wonderful teacher in Brisbane, um, Joseph Ward. Oh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, I learned with him for six years and that was that was kind of the turning point. I, I realised I really love classical singing, even though I'd spent my whole life listening to, you know, leader and opera recordings. Um, I never really kind of entertained the idea until I was maybe 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, so you were at the Queensland Con, Yes. yes yeah and from there you came to the academy in London yeah. is that the yeah part? I I did about five years at the Queensland Con um and then I moved over and did my master's um 2019 mm -hmm. um, and I graduated earlier this year um and now I'm at the opera school here at academy for another two years so it's been a wonderful journey <laughs> mm. and who's who are your teachers Cassandra uh, I studied with Kate Patterson here and Jonathan Papps, my coach. Uh -huh, yes. And and are you, I mean, obviously it, it's early on in your, um, in, in the opera, in your opera um, uh, course, but you, you've only been doing it this, this term, I guess. But are you doing scenes? I mean, how's it working out for you? Um, I'm not doing scenes this term, but we are currently working on a double bill and I'm in the Johnny Skiki that we're doing. I'm playing Nella which is a lot of fun. Um, it's a, I mean, it, it's such a, it's such a good piece for to do. Well, it's such a good piece to do period, but it's such a good piece to do at, at, at an academy, at a con a conservatoire, isn't it? Because I mean, yeah. everybody, and you have to work together. It also teaches yeah. singers to work together, you know? Yeah, well, all on stage the whole time, which is good, yeah. but there's a lot of work to do. But it's oh, great. fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great piece. Um, now, this is always a, a question that is pure theory really but where do you see your voice going and what would you ideally like to do career-wise? Uh, well I love the opera the operatic stage um, but I'm equally drawn to singing leader and song in general mm. um, so ideally I would have a foot in both worlds um, I love singing Mozart but I also love seeing bel canto repertoire and I've been looking into that a lot lately as I, as I think my voice is maturing yeah. so that's where I kind of would like ideally love to be performing um that kind of repertoire that sounds that that sounds great and it sounds it sounds realistic I mean you know you know you're not saying I want to be singing Brunhilde in five years time which is which is I mean that's not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> very good um so let's just look at your the, the repertoire that you've chosen for for mm. the semis and the final um and you you spoke about mozart well you're starting with mozart in your semi program aren't you yes yes la dame's tape from c minor mass 
Tell very... us about why, why have you chosen it? I mean, it's uplifting pink. But... <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's so joyous. I think it's a great way to start a programme. Um, I think the music is so exciting and it's just uplifting, no matter like what you believe, it's just a very exciting musical experience. And I think it shows what I can do with my voice. So I'm looking forward to presenting it. <laughs> and one of my favourite operas that draws you in whatever mood you're in to follow, which is Britain's Turn of the Screw. I think mm -hmm. it's just, uh, a, a miracle of a piece, really. Um, what are you singing from it? I'm singing the governess's aria, uh, the tower scene. So this happens in act one. Um, she's just settling in at Bly Manor and she's finding it all very exciting and intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, she just wants to please everyone, I think. She's found things to be a little bit, there's been a few bizarre moments, I think, but she's overall having a, having a good time until halfway through this aria, um, she sees a ghostly figure in the tower and she has no idea what's going on. And that just kind of sets off the rest of the spookiness in the, <laughs> in the opera, which is really cool. Yeah, it's a wonderful piece to sing. Um, <clears throat> from, from Britain to Schubert, Mozart, Britain and Schubert, what a, what a collection of greats. Um, so you've got Ganymede, Schubert, yeah. tell us about Ganymede. I mean, I've been singing this um, this piece for a really long time. And I, every time I sing it, I just, I love it. I think there's something so interesting and exciting about the text and the way Schubert set it. Um, What's it about? It is about a young mortal boy, Ganymed, who is supposedly the most beautiful mortal. Um, and he is chosen by the gods to be the cupbearer to you know, up on Olympus and ascend up to heaven, basically. Yeah. Because he's so beautiful. <laughs> and the experience of that journey, which is exciting. <laughs> uh, and then you're finishing with something rather newer by, by Jake Heggie. Yeah. Jake Heggie, um, American composer. I, I had sung some of his repertoire in my undergrad, and I just think it's really interesting and different but still there's something very accessible about the way he writes um it's very lyrical um the texts he chooses are very relatable and this piece comes at the end of a set um called natural selection which is basically a woman's journey through love and identity and figuring out what she wants and it's just kind of a beautiful lyrical expression of finding joy in yourself Fantastic. So that's your semi-programme, Mozart, yeah. and Schubert and Jake Heggie. Uh, and then your final, your, your final programme, as it were, your programme for the finals, um, begins yeah. with um, just a little number, haha, -ha, from um, Bellini, Bellini Puritani. Now, why have you, why have you picked this? Uh, I just love this repertoire so much. Mm. But, um, and I think it's really exciting. Exciting. Obviously, there's a lot of variance within, a lot of scope within the aria with the cabalestra at the end, where we really get to see her madness yeah. in this moment, where she believes that her fiance has left her, and she kind of imagines this wedding day that she never got to have, and it, it's all looking pretty disastrous for her in that moment. Sounds like a Bellini version of Lucia di Lammermo, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, basically, we love a mad scene. So, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so, and, and you go from Bellini opera to Mozart opera and, oh, just a fantastic piece from Idomineo. Tell, tell us a bit more about it. So Ilya has found herself completely, she's lost everything. She's lost her family, her country. She's been abducted and yet she is drawn to her captor, Idamante, and she sings about like, how can I betray my people? Um, when I've fallen in love with someone else and she's just going through a lot of different emotions in this piece. <laughs> Great piece to sing in a, in a final of a competition, I have to say. It does, does show an awful lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anyway, from, from Bellini and Mozart, operatically speaking, we, you turn to Richard Strauss, um, and I always think the, Mo the Mozart-Strauss combination is such a good one, uh, and, and to the Rosenbandt. Yes. Uh, what's that about? 
Uh, well, it's about a young couple, I think, at the start of their relationship. Um, this young man stumbles across the woman he's infatuated with and he sees her sleeping and he doesn't really know what these feelings are, but he's just completely drawn to her. And then in the second half of the song, she wakes up and he realizes that their lives are entwined. Mm -hmm. However you choose to interpret that. Um, yeah, they fall in love. <laughs> and do you feel the same way about do you feel the same way about Strauss's writing for sopranos as most people do? I mean I mean, I love it. I, <laughs> I, I absolutely adore singing Strauss. And yeah, I think it just always feels so comfortable, like just just opens up and blossoms. And yeah. what Strauss are you I mean, you know, in a in a dream world, what Strauss roles, what Strauss soprano roles would you like to sing operatic? Yeah, I mean I'm not, I'm kind of on this, in this weird limbo area where I, I could probably sing Sophie yeah. now. That's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. 10 years time, it would be different. But yeah, I mean, I love Rose and Cavalier, so <laughs> anything would be amazing just to Famous be there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then your final two uh, numbers, you've got, after Strauss, you've got Rachmaninoff. What yeah. is Yes, and this is probably one of the most emotional and passionate pieces I've ever come across. Um, it is, it's about infatuation and just not being able to stay away from someone and whether or not it's true love, I don't know, but it's just an expression of that, that feeling of like being obsessed with someone, I would say. Mm. Mm. And, and um You've, re you've returned to Britain, who you've, um, of course, sung in the semis, yeah. to end your final programme. Why yeah. is that? I found it like, I thought it was quite a cheeky idea to put this at the end. Um, it's just a, a nice little, I don't know, coda, I think, mm. to what's been quite a substantial programme. And it just, yeah, I, I really love the piece. I sing the whole cycle, but I think... This what, is is the, what is the cycle, for those who don't know? On this island, um, the text is by Auden, and it's all very, yeah, it explores a wide range of topics. But this piece, I think, is a kind of tongue in cheek um, look at suburban life and domestic life. Mm. And yeah, it's kind of mocking things that people might, people might choose for themselves. Well, I always think it's rather nice to end with, with a little, as you say, something a little coda. I think that, yeah. that, that that works very well. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.